I don't know about you, but I am personally overwhelmed with how many different decks there are on the market and not to mention the amount of YouTube reviews that say the same thing over and over and over again about the same decks, just in different ways that it just takes you around in a big circle and spits you right back out at square one. Well, I stumbled upon a deck that's different, intriguing, fun, and best of all, within a reasonable price range. It's time to explore the Orchid Tube Deck by MHDT Labs. Hello my friends, I'm Mike, your Hi-Fi Journalist. If you enjoy the content, I simply ask that you slap the like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you're notified every time I put out fresh new content, which is normally one, two, or three times per week. Also, a great way to support the channel is by visiting my clothing shop. It's Hi-Fi Inspired. Buy yourself a well-deserved t-shirt or hoodie. I think you might like it. On to the show. So. How long have you been looking for a DAC? A DAC that will satisfy more than just your ears. I've been getting bored with the same old small square boxes that all sound the same from one another. I recently bought a Magnavox CDB473 CD player. It's a 35 year old CD player, mind you. However, one fascinating thing about the old museum piece is that it has the Philips TDA1541 DAC chip. Now, for those of you that are like, what? Every digital device on the planet that produces sound needs to turn the ones and zeros into an analog signal. Your preamp or amp needs to understand that signal and produce sound to your speakers. It's a very simple way of putting it. It gets way more complicated and in-depth than that. However, that is its essential job. This is where the DAC comes in. An integral part of the DAC itself is that little chip inside that does a lot of the work. So the TDA1541 chip inside the Magnavox blew my face right off. It sounded warm, wonderful, amazing. I was impressed because it sounded better than some of the new players on the market today. And this thing is 35 years old. I did do a video on it, hit it. So I got a bit curious if any company implemented this chip, this particular chip into a standalone DAC that I can pass all my digital devices through to get that amazing sound across the board. Well, I found a lot of old kits that you could put together but are relatively obsolete and not sold anymore. But then I stumbled upon a company called MHDT Labs that was somehow able to source these classic TDA 1541A chips and built this DAC with them. I mean, built a DAC around them. The great part is that you don't have to worry about oversampling or obnoxious types of DSP or filters. This is just a straight up DAC that does 24 bits over 192 kilohertz and has an R2R architecture. In the US, there's a cool company called Linear Tube Audio that sells high-end tube amps and they distribute this device for MHDT. The Taiwanese company has several different DACs, all strategically named depending on their vision and experience with the sound. So when I saw the orchid, I'm like, well, the orchid is the most highly coveted ornamental plant. The delicate, exotic, graceful orchid represents love, luxury, beauty, and strength. When? <laughs> as, a simp as simple as you may think a deck is, I can confidently say this device can gracefully represent all of those things. So using the TDA 1541A DAC chip was such a nod to the past by providing the music lovers of the present and the future an opportunity to hear something different. A sound they may have otherwise never had the chance to hear, you know, because this thing is old. The TDA1541 was probably the best series of DAC chips made in the 80s and 90s. If you know of others that you feel I need to experience, please mention them in the comment section below. because I would love to see what's out there. Here's the real kicker. There is one version of this chip that everyone and their mother wants. The TDA 1541A S2 double crown version. Genuine double crowns are rare and expensive. I've seen these chips push 500 and up for $500 and up for something smaller than a stick of gum. So I haven't heard the double crown in action. However, judging by the hype and the hoopla around it, I could assume it either sounds fantastic or it's really just sought after because of its rarity. Either way, coin toss. So 
what I was getting at is on the board of the Orchid, you could actually pull off the DAC chip without any soldering involved and mount that double crown in there if you ever get your hands on one. So the other elephant in the room is somewhat obvious by just looking at it. It has a tube sticking out of the board. They implemented a vacuum tube buffer for the output stage. Something I truly believe we can all agree upon is that tubes definitely add something to the signal that passes through them. Whether it's pleasant or not really depends on the ears of the listener and or the particular type of tube you're rolling. That's what they call when you swap out tubes in a device. It's tube rolling. It's the lingo. Not sure who they are, but they named it. And so it is. A lot of people, including myself, love tube rolling. There is really no method to the madness. You just try a bunch of different tubes that are compatible with whatever you are tube rolling and find the sound you enjoy the most. In the case of the Orchid, the MHDT provided a nice guide on their website for the tube rolling fans and their opinion on which ones work best. I started with this Ericsson 5670 from Sweden. It's what came with the unit. Normally it's a GE 5670 that comes with it. I guess I lucked out here, but however, I, you know, I bought a different tube online to see if there's a difference. I bought the Tung Sol Black Plate D Getter JTL TC51 tube. <laughs> I'm sure that just meant something to someone, but I got it for 25 bucks on eBay. Another good site for tubes is vivatubes.com, huge selection, bit overpriced for the Russian stuff at the moment, but that's to be expected. Did tube rolling improve the sound? Well, in my experience with the Tung Sol was that it did change a bit. I would say it was for the better, but it wasn't like some night and day difference. I was a bit skeptical at first because when you say tubes, people automatically think this will sound like playing a new record on a vintage sound system. Unfortunately, that's not the case. This is just a buffer for the output stage to add a bit of tube flavor, kind of like an artificial sweetener in your coffee. Not exactly the real thing, like using a traditional tube amp or sugar, but it just sprinkles enough to give it, sprinkles enough to give it something to talk about. <laughs> Now, the front of the unit is what kind of took me aback for a second. At first, I didn't care for the style whatsoever. Then it grew on me. The whole, I don't know. The whole enclosure is very matter of fact, with direct labeling for all inputs on the back. In the front, there is an acrylic style material and four letters that spell BERT right in the front center. B is for BNC, U is for USB, R is for RCA, and lastly, T is for Toslink. Kind of an odd way to present it, but I kind of dig it. The acrylic is great because you can see some of the inner workings of the DAC, the tube glow, and some LED lights. The case itself feels solid in my hands. Black aluminum sides and top are a nice touch. Now, I think this sunfire looking hole for the tube on the top is absolutely rad. That was a cool design, especially around the tube because it's glowing, sun, glow, I don't know. It would help if you had a power cable ready. Luckily, I have my trusty Pangea power cable ready for this evaluation. I have no clue why it doesn't come with a power cable like everything else in this world. However, it didn't make or break the deal for me, so it's all good. Just make sure you have a uh, three-pronged power cable for the back. I connected my Silent Angel Rain Rune Core to the Orchid via USB and sent it off to the Cambridge Evo 150 and into my Dolly Oberon 3s. I let it warm up for a while and then put it to work. I immediately noticed a hop in the bass. No matter what I listened to, it had just a more prominent bass response and just bass increased in the music. Overall, there was a warmth to the sound, not super intense or over colorized, but it was, it was there. Uh, this is why people love tube rolling, because it tweaks the sound just enough to notice a difference. The mid-range was slightly forward, actually more than slightly, maybe it was forward, and the high frequencies were quite nice. The soundstage was acceptable. It did a good job placing voices and instruments where they needed to be. Overall, the sound was okay. I think it was because I originally had such high expectations for this unit and expected it to be this marvel of a DAC. So when I heard it, I was like, 
Okay, it's a DAC. I mean, this hurt me to my core because utilizing this particular chip and throwing a tube in there, I literally thought this was it. I thought this was going to be the end all. And I honestly think the Denifrips Ares 2 can best it at almost half the price. I have heard of people modding this DAC with different components. I don't think at this price point, you know, at $1,300, $1,400 ish, I should have to mod anything for it to sound good. I've read other reviews where people rave about it though, like calling it the best thing to happen in music. Maybe, I mean, this, this is all fine and well because sound is subjective and this is just my opinion. This unit can very well sound fantastic to your ears. I just wanted to give you my honest evaluation. Thank you for joining me guys. If you enjoyed the video and got something out of it, I would love for you to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and join me on my travels through this crazy world of hi-fi. Thanks again and I'll see you soon.